All right, welcome back. This is Board Game Officer. Here we have a review of Hellbringer. So I have just made a video of a full playthrough of a full scenario. Um, please go ahead and go take a watch, take a look at that. Kind of see how the game is played from beginning to end. Kind of see how everything progresses. With this one, we're going to do just a quick little review of the game. What I liked, what I didn't like, and uh, what I hope we'll see different going forward. So to start off, quick overview of the game. It is, as it says there, you know, it's a solo co-op roguelike card game, meaning you have your character, you are going to upgrade your character going through a deck dungeon, right? It's a dungeon, but it's in deck. As you go through that, monsters are going to spawn, you're going to get more equipment, you're going to level up your character, and you're going to be rolling a lots of dice. Big old dice chucker, absolutely love it. You've got this nice little mat here where the enemies are going to spawn. Um, depending on their sight, depending on whether on your sight, depends on whether you can see them. You put them back here if you can't see them. Put them here if you're playing multiplayer and one person can see them, one person can't. And you put them here if everyone can see them. Or if you're solo, you kind of get rid of that middle board and just, if you see them or not, basically just a quick view of it, see who you can hit. Really kind of cool to play out of dungeon of where everyone is at there then you have this deck this deck here is going to be your dungeon you're going to set up with certain cards with different levels or rooms within the dungeon throughout that deck so when that uh room gets revealed you go down to the next room new stuff happens there's tomes that you will find and you'll read and they'll give you benefits there's combat cards that will spawn more monsters as you go through it and then everything outside of that is going to be your loot, basically. It's going to be your loot to love, to add to your character, to do more damage, to do more skills, all of that stuff. It's going to be in that deck. So it's a really cool thing of trying to like, well, if you want more loot, but the more loot and stuff you go for, the further down in the dungeon you're going to go. So it's kind of that battle of how much you want. You don't want to just grab as much loot as you can because that means you're going to be descending way too. This is a quick down and dirty of what it's going to look like after you have it all leveled up. You're going to have all your skills leveled up. You're going to have, these are your attributes all leveled up. Your XP after you kill monsters, you're going to add stuff there. You've got your attributes at the bottom there. You've got some skills learned on that side. You've got equipment there. You've got companions up top, right? You've got this whole board just kind of situated here with your character. I'm going to zoom up on here to show you've got your health, your defense, your vision or your sight, your action points, how many learned skills you could have. And how many cards you could have in your hand. So you're going to start the game. You're going to have your hand. You're going to have your character. Each turn, you, depending on how many action points you have, you are going to pay that action point to equip and or to play that skill. When you equip or play that skill, you could automatically activate it. If you already have it equipped, you will have to pay that next turn to activate its ability again. You will pay that action points there. To do whatever it says, you'll roll as many dice as it says to there. Then you'll come up, roll some dice, see what they got, and attack the enemies. Now, this is another thing with both you and the enemies. It is an all or nothing idea. Meaning here, I just roll 45. So because that equals to the lightning titan, the 25 and defense is added together to equal that 45. So that would kill that guy. And obviously his is 30 plus 0, so it's 30. If that was not enough, let's say his was 55, he would not die and nothing would happen. Meaning, it's an all or nothing. You don't damage, you don't do any, there's no damage tokens or anything, it's all or nothing. If you hit, you kill him. If you don't, nothing happens. But same thing for you. If you're hit, you're dead and game over. If you're solo, everyone has to die for it to end in a loss in a multiplayer. Solo, one and you're gone. Another thing is there's two type of dice that you're going to be rolling. Both red or green are acid dice. The green has two blinks and the other four sides are only five. And the red has one blank, three fives, and two tens. So everything, and these are the only dice that you're going to roll. So everything is within five or ten. And you're going to roll a whole bunch and see what happens. The biggest difference is these are a little bit weaker and these, a lot of people are immune to the, they're called acid dice because a lot of poison people or stuff, people can be immune to poison, which means they're going to be immune to the green dice, means they just won't do any damage. 
but they do less damage anyways. Another thing to point out, the difference between the health and the defense, you do add them together to see how much it actually kills you. The main, they are pretty darn similar. The only thing that's different is the defense. There are ability cards that will decrease the defense of an enemy. So def defense is decreasable. Health is not, but they're still added together to create your overall health of how much you need to have to kill. And along this side here, you have... The more enemies you kill, the more you can upgrade all five of these as well. As well as cards will increase all these stats. So that is the overall quick down and dirty of the game, right? Not a whole lot into details, but just a quick down and dirty. Now, what are my thoughts on the game? So I'm going to go over the things that I don't like first, because I like to end on a positive note. <laughs> so the things that I didn't like at first is there's a lot of counting. I mean, luckily it's all in five or tens, right? So you're not trying to add three and eight and... Right, not a whole lot of adding in that way, but a whole lot of adding a counter with the dice. Um, this last game that I just played in my last video, I just rolled 20 red dice. Now you have to 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 55, 60, right? A lot of counting, which can take some time. Um, one thing that's nice about TTS is you could highlight and scroll over, boom, shows you how much, right? So that's one nice thing about TTS. Um, but, so that's a lot of counting, which can get tedious when you're doing one. I actually, so that I've played about five or six times now. I had one, I rolled 43 dice. 43 stinking dice. Goes towards something I like. Love it. That's awesome. I love dice chargers. But <laughs> counting, if it wasn't for TTS, that's a lot of counting. 5, 10, 15, 20. Keep it like piles of like 10 or a lot of like 50 or something when you're rolling that many. Right? So it can get a little tedious with that counting. Um, another thing that... What's kind of a downer was um, it can get a little repetitive um, because there's not a whole lot of depth to it, I feel like. Um, it's pretty like the enemies go, they do this. You go. That's kind of fun. I really like your turn because you could decide. Then the enemy go, if they do this. Now it's your turn. Got a little repetitive. However, I say that with a big, big caveat because I don't think it's a big negative. It was a slight negative after like five or six times of playing. I could start seeing that like, okay. I'm almost doing the same thing. Um, I've played with a different character every time as well, so it is different because different characters are going to have different abilities and different cards. Um, another thing with that, though, is which goes into actually another point is I do think that expansions are needed, and there are expansions. No, I don't know exactly what the expansions are going to be, but I say if you back it, you've got to go for the expansions. Go for the expansions. This is actually a really good price range i mean you've got to go for the expansions i think it's only a handful more like 30 more bucks and i think it will 100 worth the money for those extra i think it's going to add the replayability tenfold um, i kind of thought it was like dominion if you ever played dominion the deck builder right the base game was awesome but it kind of got old a little bit because the cards weren't super exciting but getting all the expansions great amazing makes the game i absolutely love dominion but the base game isn't super exciting like everything is and that's what i feel like this game i love this game super fun but i feel like i want more depth to it and those expansions from what i hear are going to add that ex that depth to it um so if you are getting back i say the expansions because the base game i think is good but i think it needs more depth to make it better the next thing once again it's not a super big disc because all games are going to have this um because I really do like this board, right? That kind of keeps track of all of your attributes and everything. But it can get a little fiddly, right? If you don't remember to update it, then you kind of screw yourself over in either way, right? If you get to add stuff or you forget to subtract stuff. So a lot of times in the middle of the game, I was like, re I was like, wait, is that number right? That number doesn't look right. So I'd go back through and like look at all my cards, see what I'm supposed to be at, double check. Um, right, because if you get rid of a card, you got to minus it, and then you add a card, and you put stuff back up, and so stuff is going up and down, up and down. Um, during in an actual physical game, this is going to be a chalk chalk marker, right? So you can kind of erase it and write, erase it and write, which is super nice, right? If you're having to add up, because you know he starts with two, if you're adding up to twelve each time, trying to remember how much you have, that would be horrendous. So it's good that there's this thing. Don't get me wrong. But it's a little fiddly. Once again, it's not a big disc because all games have this keep up of everything you have. 
Um, but just one thing that I found that was a little tedious. And that's pretty much all of my negatives. I'm going to my positives here. I'm going to go right back to this that we have. I This is so essential. Right now I'm playing through Madara. And if you've ever played Madara, there's so much adding. I had to print off a thing to write down basically like this because there's so much to add up each time. So the fact that this comes preset with a chalk marker so you can erase and stuff is great. I absolutely love that idea that that comes with the box. It's not even like a little add on like it's base box of what it's supposed to be. Amazing because as soon as you put it on, you add it, boom, you can forget about that card. Forget that you even had like this talisman adds to, boom, write down two extra there. Now you don't even have to think about what that talisman does because you just can look here to see what you have. Absolutely love that. Really quick down and dirty. The next thing that I really love, this is more gameplay. Um, so when you first start, you actually draw your hand and then look at the characters. So here we have all of the characters here. And you actually draw your first four cards before you actually pick your character, which is totally different than a lot of games, right? Usually you choose everything before and then you start going. Here, you actually draw your cards because different cards are going to have different abilities. So here, that black zero there on that left side, that means any character that can have it, so it doesn't matter. However, if your hand got one of these that has a green circle, that means... Anyone can use this card, but the green, which is the druid, can actually equip and keep that card learned skill so he could use this card on multiple turns rather than just when he played it. So if my starting hand has one druid card, I'd be like, huh, I want to be the druid, so I already have something for him. Right? That way it's not like, oh, I'm going to pick the paladin, and then I draw my card and I have like three druid cards. Right? And be like, well, now I'm kind of screwed because I have all this druid stuff. And so I really like that idea that you could kind of face your cards with what you have. Or you look at your cards and see who, what character might be best for you. Also, you are going to be drawing the enemies before you pick your character as well. Doing this is each character has two starting cards. So here for the monk, we have these two starting cards that you could choose. You choose one of. Now, if you already know what monsters are out there, you know what their defense is, their health, their abilities, you can kind of pick and choose like, well, if I do that, then I can do that one. Like, oh, look, I'm going to get plus one if I have 50 health. Well, I know I'm going to get health from that enemy. So I'm going to, right? So you can kind of plan off, I mean, very rarely because everything's going to change in a round or two, but it makes sure so you don't start off just kind of with nothing that you can do. Really, really like how they've done that with for gameplay. The next thing is the character progression. As you can see, this is the ending from my last playthrough. Like, I love all that progression there. You know, I mean, this is way higher than it was at the beginning. It You really feel like you're building your character, right? All those cards on the left side, I'm getting all the different cards. Cards are working together. If I use this plus this, then that's going to activate this, and then I could do... Right, they're going to play off of each other. You've got cards like this, like I was the druid. I was the druid, and so that means I had, at one point, I had three companions where you're really only supposed to have one. But because I was the druid, I was able to have three, so I was able to do more stuff with them, right? But if I was the warrior, I would be doing other stuff. So the characters, even though the character itself doesn't have too many different abilities, the different cards that you can equip and that you could learn and use really change the game, which is super, super fun. Um, another one, like I was saying before, rolling a lot of dice. Absolutely love that. I love dice chuckers. I love having a big handful. I'm so sad I don't have this game right now that I was playing. I super want this game because rolling all those like 20, 30, 40 dice. Oh, sounds amazing. So I want to put out there as well on the Kickstarter, one of the pledge levels gives you extra dice. It sounds like, well, why do I need extra dice? You might need it. I mean, it does say that, you you know, if you need to roll 40 and you only have 20, you roll 20, you count up, and then you roll another 20. Who doesn't want to put 30 dice in their hand and roll, right? Like, getting that extra dice out, I think, would be awesome and amazing. It would be really good to do um, because, oh, rolling all those dice, super fun. Um, the next thing that I actually enjoyed were the monsters. I really liked how different ones were pretty basic. Um, you also start off with basic monsters, which is nice, so you don't totally die at the beginning, and then they all kind of ramp up. Each monster has different, right, sight or vision, and they have different health and defense. But they also, as you can see, they have two, like this, continuous. So he continuously is going to have 
20. So he actually has 50 health because I had one companion and then my hero. So he actually had 50 health. All right? And then a different attack. And then he actually has minus 40 defense to it, the target that he attacks. And then he attacks for two, right? So they don't just attack. Each of them have their own little ability, which is great for different variability and stuff for each monster. So it's feeling different. It's feeling different as you go through. Um, there's two demons available right now. They both feel very different and definitely different from the enemies. They're, you know, like these have like 45, 30. The enemy or the demon at the end has like 150. So, so it's definitely different. You definitely have to like trying to do more things for it. And then kind of what I alluded to before was the different heroes. I mean, as you can see, each, there's, each hero does not have a specific like this hero can do that. This hero can do this. But each hero has a inkling towards something, right? One, they have cards that are going to do it. Like the monk does not like to use weapons. When I played as the monk, I didn't have any weapon equipped the entire game, which that's the only game I've ever done. And I would only do it with the monk because he has cards that help do stuff without weapons, right? Where the, the only time it was different was actually when I played the druid, I actually had a crossbow which is the ranger or the hunter's weapon, but it was a little, little different, which actually is not the hunter's weapon. Technically, anyone could use this crossbow because it is black, but basically meaning a little different, but super, super fun. The sorcerer is the only one I haven't tried yet, um, so she's the one I'm going to try next, but super, super fun game. Um, overall, um, I definitely, definitely want to back this game. Definitely going for the expansions, definitely going for the extra dice. Um, this game, I think, is going to be fun. I think it's going to be awesome. Um, I'm really looking forward towards more of the scenarios. Really, really looking forward towards more of the uh, expansions. A, a couple things that I hope from the expansions. I'm kind of going through, like I was saying, I want kind of more. Um, one, I want something more with the demon at the end. I think it's good that they're a lot more, a lot harder to attack. They can bring in other demons as well. They're going to do a lot more. But I kind of want, uh, sometimes like the demon would come out and I would kill him right the next turn, right? I kind of want a more of a battle back and forth for this like enemy fight, right? So maybe having some enemies that bring out more and you have to kill all of them or a, uh, demon with a flip side. So you, so you hit them once they flip and then you have to hit them again the next turn. So you can't one shot the demon or, you know, something to that effect, something to make the demon a little bit more different. Um, something else that I would think that could be fun for the expansions is maybe bringing in some, uh, a new equipment. Um, something I think I did see on the Kickstarter was like sets, which I think is a great idea because I love it when cards play off of each other. So putting more interaction between the cards, I think would be an excellent, um, thing. Uh, one other thing would maybe be some type of side mission, right? Being like, Hey, if you kill five enemies in one i don't know you did not kill five enemies right but if you kill three enemies in one turn like that's your side mission for the turn so you're going to get extra bonus points if you fulfill this mission don't really have to but right it gives you another little quest to do throughout while you're doing it adds a little bit more to your gameplay um like i said base game absolutely love it um gonna go for expansions because i like that it just adds more replayability so it it just it's gonna last a lot longer of a game and the price point, 100% worth it. 100% worth it um, to go for the all the expansions and the extra dice. Definitely, definitely going for that. Yeah, so that's my review. That's my thoughts. That is Hellbringer, the roguelike card game solo co-op. Go ahead, go. I'll put a link to the Kickstarter in the in the description below. Go ahead, go take a look at it. I think it is an awesome game. I think it is worth your money. Super good price point too overall. Um, I think I don't think you'll be too sad with this one as long as you like dice truckers if you're one who likes one deck dungeon That's one that it kind of reminds me of if you like that. I think you're gonna like this game. Go ahead. Try it out See what you think We will see you next time